Hi everyone, this is Shantosh and you are watching my YouTube channel Microscopy for All. In this video, we will learn about two contrast enhancing techniques, phase contrast microscopy and dark field microscopy. Biologists face a unique problem while imaging unstained transparent biological specimens such as living cells in bright field microscopes. These objects do not absorb light like colored samples which we can easily see in bright field microscopes. As a result, these objects have very little contrast. These objects, they do diffract light and cause a phase shift in the rays of the light passing through them. So this is a reference wave and this is a phase, ob phase object when light is passing through them, there is a retardation in the phase. But these phase differences in light remain nearly invisible in ordinary bright field microscopy because our eye cannot detect the differences in phase. Now why does phase shift happen? To understand this we need to know the refractive index at first. The refractive index is the ratio of the velocities or the wavelength of a light in a vacuum or in the medium and it is given by the formula either this or this. Now, for example, the refractive index of a water is 1.3. It means that the light travels 1.3 times as fast as in vacuum than in water. So, greater the refractive index than the surrounding media, light waves travel more slowly through the specimen and emerge from it retarded in, retarded in phase relative to the background rays. This happens due to the optical path length of the specimen and this is the product of the refractive index and the thickness of the specimen. Now if you see this image, this object has the higher refractive index than this object but both of them have the same optical path length difference due to the difference in the thickness. So optical path length difference play a vital role in phase retardation. One of the optical methods for viewing such objects is phase contrast microscopy. Here light waves that are diffracted and shifted in phase by the specimens are transformed into a amplitude or the brightness differences in the image. As a result, the transparent and unstained specimens easily become visible to our eyes. This is a cutaway diagram of phase contrast microscope and this is a schematic illustration of phase contrast optical train. The key element of phase contrast microscope are condenser annulus and the phase plate. The condenser annulus is a black opaque plate with a transparent annulus. This is positioned in the uh, front aperture of the condenser and the specimen is illuminated by a beam of light which is emanating from this ring like annulus. Now the surrounding waves, those are not interacting with the specimens are focused as a bright ring in the rear focal plane of the objective where phase plate is situated. The phase ring is made by etching a glass plate and every phase objective is modified to include a phase plate. This feature is absent in other microscope objectives. Due to the thickness difference in the ring, the surround or the background rays are advanced in phase uh, relative to the diffracted wave by almost lambda by 4 or quarter phase at the phase plate. The diffracted phase are already retarded by lambda by 4 at the specimen level. So the optical path difference between diffracted and the surrounded waves upon emergence from this uh, phase plate is almost lambda by 2 and this causes a destructive interference of both the rays in the image plane. Furthermore, the ring in the phase plate is darkened with a semi-transparent uh, metallic coating to reduce the amplitude of the surround wave by about 70%. Since our eye interpret the difference uh, in intensity as a contrast, so now we can see the object in the microscope. So here is a comparison of living human A549 
cells in culture imaged in bright field as well as uh, phase contrast illumination. Now cellular objects are having a higher refractive index than the surrounding media appear dark over here. Now the cellular attachments and some of the internal structures are quite clear. Even the contrast increases dramatically in comparison to this uh, bright field illumination. Always check the face contrast alignment before you start. The dark ring of the face plate must be perfectly aligned with the bright ring of light from the condenser annulus. And the adjustment can be made using two condenser centering screws. Now, using face contrast microscope, living cells can be examined in their natural state without killing or fixing. And it can provide you high contrast images with structural details of the transplant specimens. There are some disadvantages of face contrast microscopy. This microscopy is not ideal for thick specimens. Sometimes you will see that objects are often surrounded by bright areas which obscure the details along the perimeter of the specimen. This is called halo effect. This halo occurs in phase contrast microscopy because the circular phase retarding ring located in the objective phase plate also transmits small degree of diffracted light from the specimen. So it is not restricted to passing surrounded OF only. So the absence of destructive interference between the small degree of uh, diffracted light which is diffracted by the specimens and the undeviated light or the background light. These produce a uh, localized uh, contrast reversal which is manifested as a halo surrounding the specimen as you can see over here. The easiest remedy for removing or attenuating the intensity of halos is to modify the refractive index of the observation medium with higher refractive index components such as uh, glycerol, mannitol, etc. The halo effect can be significantly reduced by utilizing a specially designed uh, objectives named as uh, apodized phase contrast objectives. These objectives contain a small ring of neutral density films surrounding the phase ring to minimize the halo effect. So you can get a outstanding clarity and definition of detail in specimen. But the halo effect can never be eliminated completely. The pros that phase contrast has brought to the field of microscopy far exceeds its limitation. Another contrast enhancing technique for this kind of sample is dark field microscopy. Here image formation is based solely on refracted wave components. This is a schematic illustration of dark field optical trend. Dark field condition is obtained by illuminating the specimen at an oblique angle so that the direct and non-diffracted uh, rays are not collected by the objective. So a special dark field condenser annulus is mounted in the condenser turret and this resembles the phase contrast microscopy that we just learned where the specimen is illuminated by a rays of uh, light originating from a transparent annulus in the condenser. Generally, the numerical aperture of the objective you can see over here is lower than the numerical aperture of the illuminating beam which is generated by the condenser and the dark field annulus. So, non-diffracted waves are excluded as you can oversee from the objective lens and only diffracted light from the specimen is captured by the objective. Since non-diffracted background light is absent from the image, so light diffracting objects look bright against a dark field. Dark field microscopy is a very simple and effective technique. This is well suited for live and unstained samples uh, such as waterborne minute organisms such as uh, zooplankton, you can see clearly over here, even for bacteria, bacterial, flagella, microtubule, actin, even so on. So here, this is a compound eye of Drosophila, you can see how it looks in a dark field microscope. 
dart field microscopy is very sensitive because image based on small amount of diffracted light from the minute phase objects which you can see clearly against a black or very dark background there are some disadvantages also of this microscope because you need a bright illumination light source because you are collecting only a small amount of diffracting light which is coming out from the sample and this bright light may harm your light samples the resolution is limited because you need a setup where numerical aperture of the condenser should be greater than the numerical aperture of the objective. The scattered light in thick specimen lowers the fine structural details. As you can see over here, the diffracted light from the mycelium layers that is below of the focal, focus level, obscuring the fine structural details in this fungus sample. And finally, uh, you have a poor depth of field because this is a thick sample. Thank you for watching my video. Stay tuned for my next video.